Welcome to the summer edition of the Open Source Silicon Enthusiast News Update. Let's get started. So events news first, and I went to the Free Silicon Conference in Paris again, and it was fantastic as usual. While these events are really great for their presentations, and there were loads of good ones, the reason I love to go is for the networking and the face-to-face -face meeting people and building the community. So there were a ton of great talks, too many to mention all of them, but some highlights for me were Philippe on improving the performance of the open source tools, making great progress there. Leo Moser presenting Case, which is a new tool that's going to help with testing and reproducibility for analog designs. Corbinian and Tina's presentation on the German Microelectronics Design Initiative. That was a great talk that went down well. And if you're challenged by people who tell you that the open source tools are silly and not worth developing, then you've got some good ammunition in their slide deck. Tobias Senti presented Liberty 74, which is an RTL to PCB flow. I know it sounds crazy. And he showed this amazing PCB, which is a RISC-V processor. Actually, it's from Olof Kindgren, Serve. And although it does seem like a completely crazy project, actually, I think it's a really nice way of communicating what happens in these RTL to GDS flows. But instead of targeting, targeting an ASIC, targeting a PCB, and um, for smaller projects, you could fit them on like a reasonable size PCB and have them manufactured in a much quicker time than an ASIC. So I think that that's quite an interesting thing that I'm looking into exploring further. So I hope that that project continues. Then, of course, I enjoyed delivering the keynote and that is now available. The link is in the description. I talked about the long tail of semiconductors, education, tools and artisanal ASICs. My two main points were instead of focusing on PPA, which is important, but maybe not so important for us where we are now, uh, we should be focusing more on RED, R-E-D, reproducibility, efficiency and documentation. That and we need to be working together. So come to conferences, meet the people behind the projects and help build the community. So moving on to OrConf, OrConf is another fantastic open source silicon focused conference. And this year in September, it's happening in Gothenburg in Sweden. I'll be there, I'm helping to organize it. And we want you to come and we want you to present. So go to the sign up link in the description below and you can submit a proposal in the same place where you reserve your tickets. Even though it starts on Friday the 13th, I don't think anything serious is going to go wrong. And there's going to be a lot of lovely hosts there to help welcome you. Continuing on the events news, Wuthering Bites in England is happening in August um, 23rd to 25th at Hebden Bridge. Really great conference. I was there last year. I can't go this year because I'm on holiday, but I really encourage you to go and check it out if you're around and want to hang out with some great people. Also, it's the first time I've ever been involved in sponsoring a conference. And this year, I'm proud to say that Tiny Tape Out sponsored Wuthering Bites. Finally, on conference news, I'm going to be in Supercon again, 2024 in November. So I'll first be in Los Angeles, Pasadena. Then I'm going to visit uh, San Diego, UCSD and run a workshop with Andrew Kang. And then I'm going to go up to the Bay Area. So if you're interested in attending a Bay Area Silicon Enthusiast meetup and possibly a tiny tape out workshop, then fill in the link below and we'll try and get organized. And if you like relaxing to the sound of my voice, then I caught up with Chris Gamble for the Ampower podcast, number 672. We touched on a ton of topics. It was a really good conversation. Chris is always a great interview host. And if you're not a listener to the Ampower, then you should really check it out. I have learned a ton about electronics and engineering by listening to all of his awesome guests. OK, what takes weeks of work, months of waiting and results in a lot of spam? <laughs> writing an academic paper. Nobody warned me, but since it's been published, I have been receiving a ton of spam from people wanting me to write more articles and so on. Um, no, it was enough work writing one, but I'm very proud of the results and want to thank everybody who helped on this journey. If you're not in the IEEE, you can get a preprint in the description below. Uh, if you're in academia, then please cite and share it. And also, we've realized that people didn't quite realize the um, pricing model that we have at Tiny Tape Out. So one of the things I to say now is you can do 75 students do a tape out for $5,000. That makes quite an impact. And you can play with this calculator on the website to play around with the numbers and get a figure that's good for you. So please share this with the people you know in universities. We're trying to grow the business. 
So you might have seen on my channel an interview with Zepto Bars, and this is a really great interview and video where we decapped a tiny tape out four chip and had a look, and it resulted in a lot of good discussion. We got some really great images. So if you're interested in looking inside one of these open source ASICs, then check out that video. And just a note to say that uh, you should be extremely careful if you're ever dealing with hydrofluoric acid. Tiny Tape Out 8 is open and closes on the 6th of September. So get your designs in now. A new bit of functionality is 3.3 volt support for the analog designs. And we've just also launched our first competition, the Demo Scene Competition. So this is like the home computer demo scene, but instead it's instead of using like a Commodore 64, we're saying how much can you get out of two tiles worth of area on tiny tape out. So all entrants will uh, be eligible to receive a free tile uh, to have more fun with more space. Everyone who buys a demo board will get two free P mods, one for audio and one for video, so we can uh, test them all together. Uh, we've got some fantastic judges. Bit Looney, Charles Law and Sprite TM, all awesome hackers who've had lots of experience doing amazing things in tiny area, tiny spaces. Um, yeah, so the closing date is September the 6th. Check the website for rules and categories. And we've also got some great prizes. So get involved. Looking forward to seeing some amazing designs on there. We just had the Tiny Tape Out 5 bring up party. We've been shipping Tiny Tape Out 5 for the last few weeks. And that was a really nice uh, little stream we did just internally. We will be publishing an edited stream later on on this channel. Uh, but for now, here's a super cut. So we saw quite a few VGA projects, Flappy Bird. We saw a Linux boot. Uh, we looked at um, testing an ALU. Life. Uh, ring oscillator, temperature sensor. Uh, some more VGA projects. Um, looking at the loopback and measuring that with a uh, fast scope and uh, Super Mario played. So a lot of a lot more designs have been tested and we've now got a much better way of uh, submitting test results. So if you go to the Commander app, select your design, after you've tested it, you can submit the results and then that will be shown on the web page. So very pleased and excited to announce that Tiny Tape Out is now targeting IHP a really interesting open source PDK. I visited their factory last year, and if you want to see the factory tour, uh, you can check, I've linked it in the video. So thanks to Swiss Chips, that is happening. So Swiss Chips Initiative is led by Professor Christoph Studer, and it's a collaborative effort, um, and it's inspired by the US and European Chips Act. So we're gonna be um, working with IHP sending off our first test chips uh, very soon. We've got another test chip early in 2025 and our first public shuttle targeting IHP in mid 2025. So when I visited IHP, I was lucky enough to be given an old photolithography mask. Thanks, Renee. They look uh, so uh, cool. They're really nice to handle. They've got this thick, extremely transparent uh, glass, but I never really wanted to just leave it out on my desk. Um, so I decided to make a little stand for it. And when I visited ETH Zurich, I saw that they had a mask that was lit from behind and I thought, ah, oh, that's a great idea. It looks great. So this is my version. And if you are lucky enough to get hold of your own mask, you can make one of these. I've published the files on this GitHub repository. So thanks for watching and have a great summer. If you like these updates, then make sure you're subscribed to my newsletter.